Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the battle group overview of the 5th Panda Division. Please remember if you'd like to see more live gameplay of Steel Division 2 to check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash VulcanHDGaming. On the weekends on Saturday and Sunday at 8pm BST I play Steel Division 2 live and you guys can come along join in the games or just watch if you prefer. I will of course be doing gameplay on the channel as well, continuing that, so don't you worry. We will have gameplay of this division and any other divisions I cover in the battle group overviews in the future. But let's talk about the 5th Panzer. So as you can see here I've got the deployment type of Juggernaut. That means we're playing for Phase C. And I would say this is a division in 3v3 and 4v4 that if you get to Phase C is very hard to lose with. Unless of course your teammates are being steamrolled. But in most cases, you could probably even carry your team with this division because you get lots of points for Juggernaut in Phase C and you get some great units in the Panther A's, the Tigers, the Panzergrens and all that good stuff. But let's jump straight in. So in the Recon tab, my choice is the 259 Recon car. This is a half track with a 20mm auto cannon that's very, very good at destroying infantry early on. And that's what you're going to be using it for. It's there to support your tanks in the early game against infantry and spot enemy infantry and vehicles in the open. It's the only recon unit I have in Phase A. So basically you want to try and keep them alive, but also at the same time, make sure they're able to shoot at infantry because they will kill them very quickly. They're very fast, so you can get them out of harm's way very quickly if they do start getting aimed at or shot at. Um, and they can survive a shot normally because they are armoured. So... Use that to your advantage and kill plenty of stuff with these 259s. In phase B, I've got a card of Spiethrup. I'm actually bringing these in with the 251 half track. This is a recon half track. Uh, it does have the recon capability, the high optics. And what this allows you to do is use it a lot like the 259, except from it has a little less capability, of course, at killing infantry. It's more just a, a support vehicle that doesn't tend to get targeted too frequently uh, because it's just a half track at the end of the day. It's it's a lot lower down in the priority to kill than a 20mm auto cannon. So you can really get away with uh, using these alongside your Panthers to provide recon information uh, for your tanks and other units. And the spear through by themselves are relatively good. They have the exceptional stealth and the optics are very high so they're going to be great for spotting infantry and that's what you're going to be wanting to use them for because the main threat for the fifth panzer is infantry um, and close range infantry with AT weapons uh, anything with a panzerfaust panzer shrek you know all that good stuff because of course the soviets can get those units and oh the other thing is AT guns so things like 17 pounders in the allied divisions and as the Soviet divisions, you're looking for like Ziz 2s, for example, with those high powered APCR shells. So that's what you're going to be looking for with the speed through, and that's why they're pretty important. Now, other choices in the recon tab are pretty good, actually. Uh, we have motorcycles. I wouldn't really worry about these unless you need extra videos. Uh, Alf cutter are always a solid choice as well. You can also bring these in the half track and other recon vehicles. So maybe a cheaper choice than the speed through if you want to play towards more of a budget especially in the early game as well actually worth mentioning because you only get 90 points in phase a and what is it 120 in phase b per minute compared to you know balance which is like 140 in phase b so you are a little little bit of a disadvantage uh, but 250.10 it's okay uh, unfortunately lacks quite a lot of ap so the only way that you're going to get value out of this is finding side shots, but it's quite difficult to do because it's a vehicle. So that low penetration is going to be hard to hide compared to other like smaller AT guns. So like a Pack 37, you can hide in a tree line, whereas this you really can't. So it's going to be a lot harder to ambush with, uh, but can be useful for cleaning up light vehicles, but not so much a task that needs to be done in Steel Division 2 compared to Steel Division normally 44. And the other two major choices that you're probably looking at that I haven't even mentioned yet are the Panzer IV and the Panther D. So the Panzer IV, um, it's just you don't get enough of them. It's not really very good value. Low armor. Um, the AP shells on it are okay. 
but the traverse speed of that turret is really bad because it's a Panzer 4J so it's going to take a long time to aim they're not very useful their their optics are high so it matches the 259 and the half tracks and you get like I said way less of them so you don't need recon units that have high power like the Panzer 4 and Panzer D in the fifth Panzer mainly because obviously you compensate for that in the tank tab with Tigers and Panther A's. Same goes for the Panther D here. You've got the worst version of the Panther and you get barely any availability so make sure you're using that to get really good cost-efficient anti-infantry to support your tanks and that's where the 259s are great. If we go over to infantry now we have Panzergrenfuhler in phase A supported by Pioneers and Panzergrens. This is a perfect combination of like close range and long range infantry. Panzergrenfuhlers are great at long range because they have two machine guns uh, supported by the Car 98s. Really decent long to mid range engagement unit and with extra veterancy from leaders and commanders they can be incredibly powerful. Then there's Pioneers, great close range infantry. Maybe not as good as some of the Soviet equivalents, but still relatively decent. Do have the HE grenade that they can use to pin down enemy infantry squads quite quickly and therefore surrender them or just continue to shoot at them and kill them uh, whilst they're pinned. And then, of course, the Panzergrenfuhrer you bring in, best availability uh, amongst the leaders you have available, and has smoke. Smoke is the main thing when it comes to commander units or leader units, in my opinion because it gives you the versatility that you need to cross open areas or smoke off a unit that's nearby, especially considering you generally put Panzergrenfuhrers near like AT guns, near other infantry, and you know having that smoke there as cover for those units is very important. So you've got to find that somewhere, especially if you don't have like a mortar uh, to call on straight away. Um, in phase B, I've got just a card of Panzergrenz and they're coming in with half tracks. Now Panzergrenz recently have been standardized in price, so the Panzergrenz with Panzerfausts are now the same price as those without, it's just the availability is different. And the reason I'm bringing in standard Panzergrenz in Phase A is because I want to have the availability, but in Phase B it's not so important because you only have 120 points per minute for 10 minutes. and Therefore, these are actually quite costly squads, and therefore you're probably not even going to buy all of these in Phase B. You could potentially upgrade their veterancy slightly, but uh, sometimes you will need all of them, which is why I like to keep availability high, more for choice than anything. Um, but in this case, Panzergrenz with uh, Panzerfaust, lower availability, same price, and uh, you're getting that extra AT weapon just in case you need it. Then in Phase C, Panzergrenz with Panzerfaust again in Opa Blitz, and then I've got Pioneers in Half Tracks. Now, these are probably one of the most important units uh, in Phase C because this is when you're steamrolling with your big tanks. And the main thing that's going to stop you, I already mentioned, is AT guns and infantry. So you need stuff that's going to clean those out, and that is Pioneers. Pioneers are the gr units that you can use to get up close and personal in the trees and just blow up enemy infantry squads and AT guns for that matter, because if you kill the infantry in the tree lines, then the AT guns can't hide there without being under threat by the infantry. So that's how you manage to clean out those areas, and then you can freely push forwards with your tanks, which should be able to always defeat the enemy tanks you're up against, because T-3485s, they struggle against Panthers and Tigers at max range, and so if you're playing correctly, you can play around that if you've got the like smaller confined areas with the trees controlled by your pioneers. So Pioneer is very important, and I'm bringing them in half tracks because it means they can't get killed before they get to where they need to be. I mean, they can do, but if a, if a half track gets shot at, it's more likely to get crit than killed, and if it does get pinned down, the unit will unload. And whereas with like Oval Blitz, for example, if they get shot at, they're generally just going to get killed, and then the, the squad dies with it. And you're probably asking why I don't bring in Panzergrenz with half tracks in phase three as well then. But the main reason is is just price. Like this is already a lot of infantry. We've got 36 easily here. So that's already a lot of infantry to bring in in phase C for 30 and 40 points a pop. So I'm trying to keep the price down on Panzergrenz because you're gonna need it for your tanks as well. So it's just a little bit of cost saving really. 
and the Panzergrens, they unload at a distance. Whereas a Pioneer squad, you want to get it as close as possible, and the half tracks help you do that. So that's the other reason. Other choices in the infantry tab, uh, of course, you can look at Sturm Pioneers. But in Phase C, you only get 12 of them on a card as, com as compared to a Pioneer squad. And since you're playing Juggernaut, you're going to be playing mostly like 40 minute games. So although I already said this is a lot of availability, I'd only have one card of close range infantry, and it's either these or Pioneers. And in this case, Pioneers are better because they have better, better strength. And they also basically do the same squad um, or basically do the same job more efficiently. Um, now these could be pretty good because you can make them three star with leaders and commanders. But in phase C, that's actually quite unlikely to happen because you generally get low on leaders by that phase. Of course, you could compensate for that by moving the Panzergenfuhrer from phase A to phase C or maybe adding some um, Battlefuhrer in the artillery tab instead of extra infantry here for example and that might save you some points i mean honestly you could do that but i like having the smoke as i mentioned before on the panzergenfuhrer for phase a for accompanying things like pack 40s and also my other infantry so this is the way i prefer to build it um, you can of course play around the activation points a little bit if you decide to go for the artillery commander route uh, so bear that in mind. There's there's a little bit of uh, sort of variation to the divisions that you can make, but in this case, definitely prefer the Panzergenfuhrer. Um, other choices we already mentioned: the Sturm Pioneers, Felgendarmery, and Ersatz. Okay, so Ersatz and Felgendarmery. Ersatz are, I mean, they look okay, but the worst part about them is disheartened traits. So when they get pinned down, they automatically fall back, and that is a problem because. Generally, you're using infantry to hold the front line forwards and also just provide a presence there so that your tanks can continue to move. Whereas if they're falling back from that position, you have no idea what takes their place. Uh, so you have to bring in the Fel Gendarmerie with them if you're going to bring them so that they don't fall back because the Fel Gendarmerie can stop disheartened units from falling back, whereas I think leader units do not. So you're going to have to bring Fel Gendarmerie with them, which takes up two slots, which means I'd have to remove the Pioneers and the Panzergrenz in order to replace them with units that are basically worse. So that's why I'm staying away from the Erzatch Fel Gendarmerie composition in this particular division. Right, moving on to the tank tab. This is where it all happens in the 5th Panzer. This is what you play around. So in Phase A, we've got Panzer IV. These are the Command Panzer IVs, or leaders again, sorry. I always mix that up because in Steel Division normally 44 they were called commanders but now they're leaders in this because you have commanders as another unit. I mean I think they were always, always called leaders in um, Steel Division normally 44 as well but I digress. Doesn't really matter. Panzer IVs do provide the command radius as leaders and well useful to have accompanying your Tiger E's and Panther A's in Phase A because they provide two machine guns, which are great for suppressing infantry, and that's what I would use these Panzer IVs for. Therefore, light vehicle and infantry support, whereas your Tiger E's and your Panther A's, they are there to kill enemy tanks and to just snipe units from a distance. The Tigers can be great because they have pretty good like splash damage on their HE, so they can pin down like AT guns pretty quickly. Panther A's, maybe not so much. So that's something to consider. Um, tigers maintain their penetration at range. Panthers do not. That's another thing to consider. And that goes for basically all the Panthers and Tiger variants. So there you go. Two Tigers in Phase A, two Panthers in Phase A. Then in Phase B, we got four more Tigers and four more Panther A's. And then in Phase C, we have three Tiger E Fjordos. We got... 16 Panther A's and 6 Panther G's. Now the reason that I take mostly Panther A's over the Panther G's is because generally you don't need more than 185 millimeters of penetration. There aren't many units aside from like IS-2s that have that much armor that you're going to need better than a Panther A. So the Panther G's, these are insurance against things like IS-2s, but even so if you're playing correctly, you can play around IS-2s very easily with the 5th Panzer because you have availability over those IS-2s. IS-2s are very low availability, 
and what that allows you to do is find side shots because you can play two versus one and if you're playing correctly you can attack from quite far away like say a thousand meters and then have another one shooting from a different direction you know at like a 90 degree angle from another thousand meters from your target and just find those super long range sniping side shots which will kill the IS-2 and the IS-2 will struggle uh, well maybe not struggle but is quite likely to bounce at max range onto a panther and I mean a panther is likely to, pen to bounce off an IS-2 but maybe not so much in the side armor so definitely something you can take advantage of and is great to do with the Tigers and I would say that's one reason that the things like the 14th Infantry are really good for countering the IS-2 divisions because they have that sort of strong tank and of course the 5th Panzer has them in waves. So there you go, that's the composition of units that they have. I haven't really optimized this. I would say that potentially this is too many tanks in phase B, you could maybe vet them up. Um, but either way, decent spread to sort of launch you into phase C and the ones you get in phase A I would make sure you look after because you're gonna find it hard to replace them with 90 points per minute especially when you're purchasing other stuff so the only other way that you could potentially build this is bring more Panther G's earlier but availability of Panther G's is very limited compared to Panther A's so you get three in phase B as opposed to four you get two in phase or one in phase A as opposed to two and in phase C it's actually only six compared to eight so in a long running game you're going to want that extra availability in the Panthers for sure and the Panther A's allow you to provide that. Uh, there is a Panther G Fjorda again limited by availability same with the Panther A which is why you take the Tiger E's um, in phase C and it gives you that extra Tiger E flexibility for the longer range engagements there you go that's the tank tab moving to support this is one of the easier tabs for the fifth panzer we have uh, two commanders uh, i didn't mention this in the last video but at the moment i generally take two commanders in most of my divisions i did drop to one commander for a long time but i found that the way i play especially if you're playing quite aggressively it can cause you to have to move your commander too close to the front line especially if you're pushing a salient and that means it's likely to get killed and therefore having a replacement is always really useful also in this case a befell tiger is still a good unit on its own yes it costs a lot but if you have to replace your commander this is still a good unit to use and in phase c like this isn't actually too costly so there you go the befell tiger in phase B we've got the commander in phase A with the half track. I would rely on this first. If it dies, then you bring in the Befell Tiger. You can also bring in the Befell Tiger if you run out of leaders uh, because it does provide two-star veterancy to things like Panthers, like just straight up if you're next to them. So you can use it that way as well, which is great because it's really difficult to kill anyway. Then aside from that, I've got Opal Blitz Munitions in phase B and Opal Blitz Munitions in phase C. I have been questioned previously as to why I bring so much supply, especially when my artillery tab is not particularly very full. But again, because you're pushing for longer games with the divisions that I tend to make due to 3v3 and 4v4 being what I play the most, having enough Opa Blitz is very important. And if you go for like a card in A and a, K and a card in B, 8 is generally not enough. So you... The only way you're going to build more than that is to put two cards in B, but then you're never going to buy two cards in B, so you may as well put a card in C and get the extra availability anyway, and that's the way I see it. So it's two cards of Opal Blitz, and there's no point in bringing two in B. So <laughs> there you go. That's the whole ethos behind my supply. Now there are Flammenwerfers. These can be useful for taking forward points early in the game, I personally have shied away from doing that with the 5th Panzer because you really want to like build yourself up. I'd say one mistake that a lot of people do in Steel Division 2 is they throw units in piecemeal. So they'll bring in one Panther at a time and then like fight with it and then it will die and then they'll buy another one and then that will die and then buy another one, etc, etc. Whereas what you want to do is you want to buy in one, sort of leave it kind of a little bit farther back Yes, allow it to fire at things that push forwards, of course, 
but use it defensively until you get a second one. And then when you have two, you can play off those side shots, like I mentioned before, and they also support each other very well. So you've got two really good targets that can, or really good units, <laughs> which will probably t turn into targets. Uh, but, but either way, two good units that can push forwards together and support each other rather than just one unit on its own that will die. A lot of the reason that the 21st Panzer, especially in the games that I cast, kept losing because they were using King Tigers on their own. And if you bring in two King Tigers at the same time, they can support each other. And that's, you know, what you want to look for. And it is especially the case in the 5th Panzer with their expensive units. Anyway, um, moving back to the support tab. Flamin Verfers, yeah, great for pushing early, taking those quick objectives uh, because they do have fast transports in the motorcycles with 95 kilometers per hour. And they also have the Kubel with 80 kilometers per hour. But I think the bike's the best choice, or the Opel Blitz. The Opel Blitz is still pretty fast. And uh, yeah, that's why yeah, Axis side can be pretty good with the infantry anyway. And another reason why I bring in the Pioneers and Panzergrens both in Opel Blitz, because they have they are fast. And so you can get them into position in phase A and match units like Superli uh, that will be pushing the same places. Anyway, Flam Panzer. This has two flamethrowers at the moment. Pretty lackluster. It would be great if they increased the range to a similar range that it had in Civil Division normally 44. Um, I think it's the only unit that I know of in the game that got a range reduction compared to Steel Division normally 44, which is kind of weird. Uh, but either way, um, if it got a bit of a range buff, then I think it would be a lot better. For now, I would say it's a bit overpriced for what it offers. And you can't get many of them. Um, then there's the MG42s. They've recently recently been buffed. Um, actually, I'm not even I'm not sure if the MG42 has. Maybe the MG34 did. Uh, but either way, um, they can be really good for supporting infantry from range, of course. But I find that they generally will get hit from a distance very quickly and will become a mortar target very fast if they are an issue. And for the points cost, 35 points they can quickly cost you a lot and since say a panzergrain with two mgs costs less why use an mg42 yes it has the 1500 meter range but if you're using it from that range it's just going to get killed by tanks quite simply then there's the griller this can be actually really effective if it's used correctly um, it's fantastic for smashing infantry at range so if you're being swarmed, like man-spammed, by, say, the 184th Infantry on the Soviet side, Grealers can deal with that very, very well. And a great supporting weapon to have. I would probably have these as the next card in my division if I had to choose another one. But obviously I don't have the activation points in the support tab to bring it. I maybe could replace the Befell Tigers in Phase B with the Grealers. But... I don't think that I want to do that right now. So, you know, it depends. If I play the 5th Panzer more and I find that I'm never bringing in the 2nd Commander, then I would replace it with the Griller. And that's what I suggest if you don't want to bring in two Commanders. There's also the Befell Panther A. I find the Tiger is just a better all-round tank because it does provide two machine guns. So, as a Commander unit that's going to be sort of sitting back, it's just good for supporting itself. If it gets flanked or any infantry sneaking about, it can deal with that. Whereas a Panther A will not deal with infantry as well. Uh, then we have the anti-tank tab. So I actually have the Panzerbuchse uh, at the moment in Phase A. Really, really good vehicle for sniping um, lighter vehicles, but also just cr causing criticals to tanks, and especially things like the T-3476s. It can really, really slow down and hamper a push from T-3476s. That's what it's great for. The other good thing about it is it has very good stealth. So it can fire a lot of shots before it reveals itself. And even and, and one great thing you can do is if you if you notice your Panzer books is firing at something, let it fire three or four shots, then pull it back, let it sit for like five to ten seconds and then push it forwards again and it will maintain its stealth value whilst never being able to be seen and it can be incredibly irritating to play against now i think this is one of the only divisions i actually use the panzerbuchse 
Um, but in other divisions, it can be just as effective. In this case, I think it's just a matter of me initially trying them out, but then deciding to keep them because it's good against like mass light armor and also for just picking off um, vehicles at range. Then I have a card of the Panzervernichtungs. These are six man Panzerstreck squads with very good stealth. Good for supporting your other infantry in towns and so on and providing you with that Panzerstreck if you have to fight in those close range environments. There is the potential that you could bring in the Panzerstrecks instead, but you only get four per card as opposed to three per card with the extra veterancy in the Panzervernichtungs. The other thing about veterancy is that it does give you damage reduction on your units, so your units take less damage if they are higher veterans. Veterancy, that's I think mainly for infantry. I think it's only for infantry actually. So if you manage to get a leader by these, which has the commander buff, then you can make them three star veterancy, and the Panzervernichtungs will actually be quite tanky. So you can use them very effectively alongside your other infantry. And they do provide relatively good fire support with the D43s. The other two cards that they have are the Pack 40s. I've got the Pack 40s in A and Pack 40s in B just to support wherever is needed. If you have a lot of trees to play with, then Pack 40s can be great for ambushing positions and also just covering open ground from those heavy forests. Um, and they're great for it's supporting you know tiger e's and panther a's the panther a's and tiger e's will always be priority over a pack 40 and this allows pack 40 sometimes to rack up a lot of kills because people will be ignoring them in favor of the tigers thinking that the tigers are doing all the damage when in fact it's just a pack 40 sat in the tree line doing plenty so really good supporting weapon for your heavy armor pack 36 doesn't really have a place in this division just underperforms with all of the other units that you have and then Marta 3 same deal why have a pack 40 equivalent on a on a chassis that's really lightly armored when you can just have a panther <laughs> of course they're much cheaper but the availability doesn't make them worth bringing or spending activation points on compared to the panthers for example so that's another thing to consider Moving on to the anti-air tab, in phase A I have the FLAC 38 20mm. Now one important thing to note about these is I do bring them in with the SDKFZ 11 FLAC, which is a vehicle that you can bring them in with. You only have six of them available and it's perfect for bringing them in with the FLAC 38 20mm. Um, so you basically get two 20mm for one activation slot, which is really nice. You get 12 units of AA and one activation slot, which is massive. Um, it's 90 points a piece, which is quite a lot, but by doing it this way, you're never going to buy all of these in phase A because it just costs too much. But by doing it this way, you get a lot more extra AA on your division, whereas if you, for example, just had, I don't know, Gepards in A, you'd only get four of them as opposed to 12 20 mils. So it's a no-brainer in my opinion, definitely a choice that you should take gives you plenty of anti-air coverage and if that's not enough you can bring in the SDK of Z71s in phase B I've got two of these available and then in phase C another card of them which brings in another four and then I've also got the FLAC 4188 mils in phase C now this is quite an interesting choice and one that I've been you know considering removing in favor of maybe like more command in the artillery tab for example but it's more of a tryout unit. I've given them extra veterancy in phase C so that alongside a leader with commander buff, they are three star veterancy. And then since they already have 55% accuracy, I think they get 8% more accuracy from one chevron, which means they'll get like 16% more, I think, from two chevrons, which means they'll be hitting, you know, really high accuracy, you know, near the 80 mark with three star. And you know, that's going to be effective. And they'll fire very quickly as well. They've got a rate of fire of 15 rounds per minute. I'm not sure that's the same with the AP shells. No, it's 12 rounds per minute, but that's still very fast. Imagine firing 70% accurate, over 70% accurate AP shells with 160 millimeters of penetration at 12 rounds per minute. If this is not being directly targeted by tanks, then those tanks are very dead. 
So I'm trying it out. Something that you need to be careful with, but get it in the right sweet spot, which generally I would say just around the corner of like a heavy forest or something so that when it retreats, if it has to retreat, it goes straight out of line of sight. Um, it can cover a really nice area. Um, so, you know, you get those like heavy forests at, like either side of like a big open field. Put one just around the corner and give it an attack move to go round as enemy tanks are coming towards you. It will stop, fire, and it will keep firing until obviously it gets pinned down. And then you give it the retreat order and you got to hope that it does fall back <laughs> behind the uh, heavy forest into cover. That's the idea anyway. Other choices, I already mentioned the Gepard. Low availability doesn't really make it worth it. In phase C, potentially could be a good idea, actually. You do get them a one-star veteran C, and three-star veteran black 20 mils are actually pretty decent. So if you could bring them in instead of the flak 88s, could be a decent choice. But I'm using the 88 as more of an anti-tank gun as opposed to anti-air. And then there's the flak 43s, which are good, but not as good as flak fillings. So that's where the SDK of 7.1 is fantastic because it's, you know, 420 mils aimed at the sky, which is uh, pretty ridiculous. These can also be fantastic infantry support, by the way. Same goes for the 20 mils, especially the 20 mil uh, vehicles here. If you're struggling with infantry in the early game, these 20 mil auto cannons can be really, really handy. Just make sure that you keep them at maximum range and... I think that's like 1,000 meters, basically outside of infantry MG range. That's the main thing you, you're going to want to do. Uh, because if the vehicles, like the SDK of Z11 Flak, comes under fire from MGs, it will die pretty quickly. Uh, same goes for the SDK of Z71s. Machine gun fire will kill these, so be careful. Moving on to the artillery tab. There is absolutely tons of choices here. But my choice is 257 mortar carrier. Vespers in Phase B and the Hummels. So the 257s provide you with, you know, standard um, HE shell fire support and smoke. Smoke's probably the biggest thing in Phase A for these mortars. But of course, the HE shells are great for pinning down AT guns if you spot them. Then there's the Vespers in Phase B, uh, sort of longer range, you know, artillery if you need it. Um, most of these tanks do come with radios, so like the or the Panzer IVs and the Tiger Fjordas both come with radios. Um, Panzer Genfjörder have radios. Um, you can also get radios in the recon tab if you want to. Uh, but either way, Vespers using that those tanks to find the corrected shot is very important, and these can be great with corrected shot, and they're also pretty hard to counter battery since they are armored. Same goes for the Hummel. Really good unit for long range counter battery as well. Consider these for counter battery because if they start getting fired back at themselves, they are armored, of course, so they're going to be a lot more resilient to artillery fire. Um, there are some Soviet artillery pieces, like the 258 or 280 millimeter units, that might just one shot your Hummel. So I would still suggest that you try and move after firing your volley. But they will move faster and they're armored, so they're a lot likely to a lot less likely to be killed by counter battery, even if your opponent is very quick at firing back. Uh, other choices in the artillery tab include uh, the command. I already kind of mentioned these. Useful if you don't want to bring the command in the infantry tab, can be a great replacement. I do actually have uh, much recon or not much many radios sorry um, I just realized in this particular division so what I would maybe suggest is taking out these 88 mils and replacing those two points that you get there and that gives you two points yeah um, those two activation points uh, with the uh, battery fielder in phase B that will give you more command for your infantry in phase B and C and will also provide you with more radios to make your artillery more effective. So that's definitely a decent suggestion. We got the Beerbachter. Uh, these would be great if they had uh, very good optics or very high optics, but at the moment they do not. So 
less of a good choice. And now they're only two man squads, a lot less effective. 81mm mortars, basically the same as the 257, just without armor. So bring these because they're very difficult to counter battery in the early game. Um, then the LEFH 105 mils, same as the Vespa, but the Vespa's armored. So I bring the Vespa. So it's just about, you know, making these hard to counter battery and having consistent fire support. 120 mil um, can be useful, but in the early game, these suffer from low ammo count. And since I'm not bringing Opal Blitz Munition Phase A, they will run out very quickly. You get an extra few shots with the 257. Well, you get an extra volley from each vehicle uh, with the 257s, a total of 20 extra HE shells in Phase A, uh, which can be very, very useful. Um, then there's the SK-18-100. Now, this can be pretty good, uh, but just kind of lacks the damage. You can get quite a lot of them, I think. Actually, maybe not. Yeah, well, that's why you wouldn't bring them. The low availability, low damage compared to other units. Uh, so, yeah, that's something to stay away from. Then we have the 251-2s. Now, these are great in Phase A um, because they get a massive ammo count. You get 40 HE shells and 25 smoke shells, which is really good. Um, so, worth considering to take instead of the 257s, but I'm taking the 257s more for budget than anything. So the 251 2s, great choice. Uh, depends if you need that extra ammo count. Can make a big difference. Then we have more Vespers available, and then you've got your off-map vehicles. 105mm off-map is very lackluster at the moment, and same goes for the 172mm, which is why I would not recommend bringing either. Now we have the air tab. Air tab's pretty simple in the pa in the uh, fifth panzer. You've got the, well, I've got Focke Wolf 190s in phase A and Focke Wolf 190 in phase B. And the whole idea of the 5th Panzer Air Force is just to cover the skies. Make sure that you aren't being hit by enemy airstrikes. You're not necessarily bringing these in to you do your own airstrikes unless you specifically need to strafe a target very quickly, like an AT gun. Uh, so that's the only reason that I'd ever buy a Focke Wolf 190, but strafing ground units is becoming less and less effective with each patch. Uh, because people are using it a lot so it's being nerfed and therefore using them as strafing units will still be quite good but less effective as it used to be and therefore not potentially worth 140 points just to strafe like a 50 point 60 point AT gun so bear that in mind when you're buying stuff uh, it's always like value for money is something you've always got to consider with your unit purchases so these are more just for fighters fighter on fighter engagements and fighter on fighter bomber engagements mainly and bombers of course well any any aircraft um other choices we got some recon uh these are the ar 66 c's really slow biplane recon if you need it i would definitely suggest going for the uh, do 215s instead if you want air recon uh, just because they're a bit more tankier and they're also obviously quicker uh but the recon options are not very good in the 5th Panzer compared to other divisions, so yeah, probably a reason not to not to bring them in. Uh, could be useful if you focus more on the artillery tab if you bought if you made a artillery more artillery focused 5th Panzer. Uh, then you've got the night fighter variant of the DO217. Uh, this is just too slow, really. It's gonna get killed by any dog fighting aircraft very quickly and even for ground attack it's not even that effective it doesn't strafe very well so yeah a bit of a lackluster unit me 410 same deal uh, will get killed by most dog fighters if you head on with enough of these then it might work but in general i'd recommend staying away from them uh, same goes for the me 410 b2u2 um, remember that it's not an anti-tank. A lot of people get this icon confused with anti-tank, but it's just close air support, which means that it's a strafing aircraft. So it does have 20 mils, but those 20 mils have no penetration. Same with the 30 mils, no penetration value. So just going to be providing HE support, and it's just not terribly effective. So yeah, 
for the price, pretty lackluster, and will get killed by dogfighters. Then we have the Focke Wolf 190 G8, which comes with a rather large payload of a 250 kilogram HE bomb and four 50 kilogram bombs. The main thing with this Focke Wolf is it's very slow and its agility is terrible. <laughs> so if you compare it to the Focke Wolf 190, the standard Focke Wolf 190, it's got 600 speed, medium agility, medium resilience. The bomber variant has very bad agility and 420 km per hour speed. So this is going to get shot down very easily if you're going to start relying on them, and it costs a lot. I mean, it only costs five more points than a fighter variant, but it's a lot more likely to die because uh, it will be shot at by AA for that little bit longer. So, yeah, there you go. And that's your lot for defenses, pretty standard. You guys can look at that for yourselves. And the fifth panzer generally would be used for attack in a breakthrough scenario. So there you go. Uh, juggernaut deployment type, you're focusing very heavily on phase C. A lot of the units in this division you won't buy in B, so you're probably wondering why I have so much availability in B when I'm probably not going to be buying all of them in B. You know, you got fighters, artillery, all of this stuff costs loads of cash, but the big thing to consider in any division is choice and making sure that you have everything you need for each scenario. So if you need to counter battery more or your opponent's using more, lots of AT guns and you might focus on the artillery over the tanks um, and then in phase C you'll buy all of your tanks. Um, in phase B maybe they're focusing on aircraft so you want more Focke Wolves and you'll pay less for artillery. Um, or maybe you buy more anti-air, for example. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can play around things, and that's why I focus on availability over veterancy in a lot of cases. You can streamline them for 1v1s by cutting down availability and increasing veterancy, which is something I'd suggest if you play a lot of 1v1. You could certainly start to cut this down to size, but in general... This is how I like to play it with my 3v3, 4v4, and plenty of availability it means that this has the potential to run through an hour game and still have stuff left. So, yeah, pretty important that you do invest in that availability, and 5th Panzer is not short of it whatsoever. So there you go, 5th Panzer for you. Uh, hopefully that was uh, detailed enough. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments. Uh, once again, a reminder, if you do want to see this potentially played live, make sure to come along to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash VulcanHDGaming, and you can ask me questions there. I'll be able to talk to you guys directly and straight away, um, so definitely worth doing, and I will try and get a gameplay out with the Division in the future on the YouTube channel. So um, you've got that to look forward to, but that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.